You're right there, it's Tim Golf 5 Tango Mike again, and uh, thanks for joining me. And if you're new to the channel, and if you like what you see today, then think about clicking that subscribe button. We'd love you to have you on board. And if you're a returner, thanks for coming back. Now, I'm going to be putting up an antenna in the next few days, which is a big old favourite of mine. It's the NFED Half Wave Antenna. Uh, the one I'm putting up is going to be 20 metres long, that's about 66 feet, and will give me a great match on 40, 20, 15 and 10. 40 metres as the actual half wave, and then the other bands as harmonics on 7, 14, 21 and 28 megahertz. Simple, eh? Well, how does the unfed half wave work? Well, I'll show you a diagram of how I'm going to put this antenna up and I'll show you how it's fed and how it does. So here we go. Uh, we can see here, look, uh, the antenna I'm going to put up is in a fairly restricted sort of space. It's actually only about 29 feet. That's about nine meters long. Well, I'm able to do it because the NFED half wave is quite versatile in how you can actually put it up. You put up in a variety of styles, uh, inverted L, inverted V. Uh, you can put it up as a vertical if you've got enough space, a sloper. Bend it on your garden. It's quite tolerable, really. And uh, it's a great antenna to fit into most spaces, and as well as taking, uh, taking with you portable as well, which I've done. Anyway, let's have a look at this diagram again. You can see on the bottom right-hand corner, there's a little dot there, which is the source on MMANA, which is the, uh, the modeling software I'm using. And that's where the 49 to 1 transformer is going to be. And that's going to be the, the place where the antenna is actually fed. It's 49 to 1 because it's bringing down the, the impedance at the feed point by a factor of around 49 because it's quite high at the feed point you see at, uh, at the half wavelength the frequency and, and in the full wavelength and the others as well. So we need to bring that down to like a fifth, around a 50 ohm match so you can just plug some coax in and off you go and your, and your radio will stay happy. So, as I say, it's fed at the bottom. Now, in my case, that's the actual diagram of the antenna in my garden. It's going to be fed at the bottom, about a foot or so, about 30 centimetres or so above the ground. That's going up a fibreglass pole vertically, look, uh, to a height of about 7 metres. That's about 22 feet. And then it goes up again uh, to a sort of on a slope there to the real apex of the antenna, uh, which is again held by a fibreglass pole around 9.5 metres high. That's about 29, 30 feet. And it goes down then to about 6 metres. That's about 19 feet off the ground. Again to another pole. And then down about 9 feet, about 3 metres. Uh, so the end of it, the far end, the little little end on, on the left-hand side, is probably about, uh, I don't know, 10, 11 feet, about 3.5 metres off the ground, say. So, you know, pretty standard stuff. And uh, again, it's been squeezed into a, 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 a width of, of, of a garden, which is literally less than half of what the full length of the antenna is. So let's see how the MMANA modelling tells us this antenna is likely to work, shall we? So first of all, we're going to look at scrolling up here to 40 metres. So uh, here we go. So on 40 metres, we can see here, look, that we've got a typical sort of uh, uh, donut shape in terms of the far field plot for 40 metres. When the antenna is as low as this because the apex is only about well it's less just less than a quarter wave above the ground less than 10 meters so we've got some nice gain going up at those higher angles typical of your fairly low 40 meter dipole not a problem and that's what i was expecting to be honest and it'll be strong for about uh, between 500 to 2000 miles or so uh, when we've got a nice short skip in the uk called into g then this antenna will do pretty well, I think. And in fact, it has done before because I have actually used this antenna in exactly this configuration in the past. So that tells me what's happened in the past is about right, that this antenna was pretty strong into Europe and when we had short skip in the UK, it was pretty strong there as well. We worked a bit of DX in it as well, actually. Some strong US stations into South America as well in the evening on 40. Well, when the band opens up, you can pretty well work DX nearly any antenna, can't you? So uh, this will serve you well for both. Let's have a look at 20 metres then. Now on 20 metres, this antenna is a full wavelength long, okay? Now the initial far field plot is a bit more squashed as we can see, and we've got a bit more gain now at the lower angles. And in fact, well, I took the liberty of looking at this antenna as to, on 20 metres as to how well it performed on sort of five degrees elevation, because five degrees is a good angle to look at when we're looking at the likelihood of working a bit of DX, because the lower angle of, of elevation, our lower angle of takeoff is where we get, ant uh, we get uh, DX signals in and we push our RF out as well and if we look at the uh, the azimuth plot here now you might notice uh, this is uh, on, on the on the right hand side you can see a dot there at about two o'clock if we look as a clock face and if you look at the top of the diagram we can see the letters GA that's the gain now the figure we've got there is minus 6.0 dBi minus 6 dB now 
that minus six figure is a bit of a baseline for me when I'm looking at the, how, how well these antennas work at low angles because that's the kind of gain you get at five degrees off the horizon with a quarter wave vertical or a half wave vertical, so ground mounted or just off the ground, okay? So uh, what we've got here basically is that the uh, the antenna, like I showed you before, if I go back to, if I show you again the, uh, the actual uh, the shape of the antenna, you can imagine that's basically how it is transposed onto that diagram. So effectively, therefore, on the right-hand side of that diagram, we can basically see that's where the vertical element is. Then we got, as you're looking at the diagram, then we've got the two inverted V elements and the small one going down, basically plumping onto that diagram, and that's how it looks. So what we've got here is a nice bit of vertical gain of that, uh, of that vertical bit, the initial bit. And in fact, if we go down to the next page, we can see we've got that minus 6 dB gain basically broadside of this uh, of this um, a a antenna as you'd expect from like a dipole for example and in fact our greatest gain is off that of the center of that broadside and we can see here at minus 3 db so pretty good really um now if we look at 15 meters this is where we start to get some really nice performance if we look at the far field plot on 15, we can see now we've got a nice bit of a lobe going onto that side. Now, for me, that's onto the south, southwest, southeast. And that's giving me some really nice gain now, this antenna. Uh, you can see that uh, towards the, the fact the southwest, that would be, we've got a minus 2 dB gain. Uh, we've got a minus 4 dB gain there about, so directly south, and minus 2 again down to the southeast. It's giving me some nice, uh, a nice sort of direction there towards Africa, uh, down to Southeast Asia maybe, and certainly to places like Greece, and also down towards places like South America. So lovely. Uh, not so strong on the right-hand side, as you can see, to the States, but hey-ho, I think this could be a very nice antenna on, on 50 metres for me. So I'm looking forward to that. And in fact, even when the band wasn't really open a couple of years ago, on occasion that it was, whenever I heard somebody on 15, I worked them. So this is, this is a decent antenna. And if we look at the actual currents coming off the antenna on 15 meters, we can see we've got three main lobes on 15 because it's obviously now, what is it? So it's about a, um, yeah, it's a one and a half wavelengths, isn't it? So we've got three main lobes. So on the right-hand side of that vertical element there, we've got a nice, as you can see, a bit like a quarter wave vertical, really. We've got that main lobe coming up about a quarter wave up from the ground on 15. And then we've got those two main lobes on the, on the inverted V bit there, which gives us that nice bit of gain over to that side of the antenna. Really pleased with it. And then finally, 10 metres. 10 metres gives us even more of a bonus. Because again, if you look at the far field plot there, what we now have, not only have we got that same sort of gain going to the south like we had on 15 metres, in fact, we've got a bit more because we're now at minus 0 0.4 there, minus 3.8 as well, though. On the, on the other side, we can see now we're going towards the west, the northwest, towards the states, for example. We've still got minus 3.8 dB of gain. We've got two main lobes going to the west and a little bit more energy going over to the uh, going over to the south southeast as well so actually i'm very very pleased with the way this antenna looks uh again 10 meters wasn't really open much to be honest with you when i when i used this antenna in the past so i'm looking forward to seeing whether it stands up to this i must say the results i've seen for 40 20 and i think 15 back up what I've seen in terms of the performance of this antenna in the past. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how it does on 10 meters, because 10 meters is going to be a lot more prolific over the next uh, months and years. It's going to be a good band to work, and having that as a bonus band and antenna like this is, is going to be a lot of fun, I think. So, you know, overall, I'm really looking forward to using the NFED Halfwave. I've tried it before for a couple of years. I know it works really well at home. I know I'm in a semi-urban environment and there's clutter everywhere. I know modelling doesn't give us the entire picture about an antenna, but for me, modelling is another piece in the jigsaw. It tells us, first of all, whether this bumblebee is likely to fly. And I think this will, because in my instance, not I haven't just modelled an antenna completely cold. I've actually used this antenna in the past at home. I know how well it works. And this modelling actually seems to back up nearly everything I know about this antenna. So I'm very, very pleased that it's done that. It's good to see when you use antenna modelling, it can be used to back up the real world stuff as well. Even on a compromised situation and a compromised setup like this. Really looking forward to, to, to actually using this antenna now, especially with the higher bands opening the way they are.
Anyway, hope this is of use to you. Try the unfed half wave. I really recommend it. And if you like what you see on this channel, then I'd like to recommend that you subscribe here too. So take care and good to see you. And I hope to catch you again soon. All the best and enjoy the bands as they open up. Take care. Bye-bye.